Mr. Mead and His Garden by John Vernon Lord. Mr. Mead spent many long hours in his garden among the flowers. You can often see him hoeing the weeds, pruning his roses, or sowing the seeds. Hour after hour he dug and he dug, and woe betide any snail or slug. Whenever he saw one, large or small, he threw it over the garden wall. A slimy slug or a wandering snail, these quickly made him shout and rail. Away, you squashy, squelching creatures, with your sticky, sloppy, slovenly features. The neighbors soon were very cross, and his wife, Mrs. Mead, was at a loss. The snails and slugs were piled so high that the unhappy woman began to cry. You make me blush so, Charlie Mead. Indeed you do, you do indeed. I'm going to stay with my sister Bess until you've cleared this awful mess. If you want to go, that's up to you, said Mr. Mead. I've work to do. The piles he'd made had grown so tall that they soon looked more like a castle wall. And then the wall became a tower, hiding the sun from shrub and flower. In the garden, strange things took place. Each flower appeared to have a face. Onions became beach balls, carrots became boots, umbrellas instead of rhubarb, and the trees wore suits. The apples were light bulbs, and up in the sky, the moon in the gloom was wearing a tie. Later on, in the middle of the night, Mr. Mead had a really terrible fright. Garden creatures, unusually big, were dancing a phantom, frantic jig. A melodious millipede with orangeade played an orchestral serenade. Next morning, Mr. Mead felt completely alone. All he could do was moan and groan. Father, odds, bod odds bodikins, tut and drat, humbug, fiddlesticks, tush and all that. Everything around me is now so queer, somehow I'll have to get out of here. And so before he got any sadder, he climbed a tree, taking with him a ladder. Right at the top he found a crow, who said he'd been watching him work below. The crow announced with a crackling croak, There's nothing quite so queer as folk. Mr. Mead said, I want to get down. The crow replied, I'll fly you to town, just jump on my back. And with no more ado, the crow flapped his wings, and off they flew. They landed outside a garden shop, a most convenient place to stop. Thanking the crow for the wonderful ride, Mr. Mead jumped off and stepped inside. Excuse me, sir, and begging your pardon, I have rather too many snails round my garden. Perhaps you can tell me what I should do, because, quite frankly, they're spoiling my view. The shopkeeper said, When they're in the mood, lettuce and strawberries are their favorite food. Slugs like these too, so if you buy a lot, you can tempt them to move to another spot. Off they went home in a hired van, while Mr. Mead told Crow the plan. He'd bought the strawberries, lettuce, and seed, on which all the snails could feed their greed. When all was prepared and ready to start, Mr. Mead checked every part. The mower had five wheelbarrows on tow tied together by the kindly crow. The crow drove off at a very slow rate, and Mr. Mead fished behind with the strawberry bait. It wasn't long before each slug and snail left the tower and followed the trail. The snails and slugs in single file followed the fruit for many a mile. Mr. Mead dropped the strawberries one by one, and the tower round his garden at last was gone. The slugs and snails came in crawling flocks, till they came to a damp wood with many rocks. Plants were prepared and seed was sown, a strawberry placed beneath every stone. Here in this lonely, peaceful glade, a blissful paradise was made. In dark, damp corners among the trees, the slugs and snails lived a life of ease. Mrs. Mead and all the neighbors cheered, now that the wall of snails was cleared. As Mr. Mead came down the lane, they welcomed him back home again. The end.